So welcome everyone. Today is May the 11th, 2022. This is our whole life healing call where we focus on all lies, L-I-E-S, matter. And we have um, Dr. David Peck and hopefully Dr. Alex. Um, before we um, get to that part where we will create a healing code and a trilogy for you to address the topic today, I want to share this disclaimer. This presentation is for education and informational purposes only. And since we're going to be talking about issues of health and well-being, we wanted to make sure that you understand this information is not intended to heal or cure anything. Everything in the presentation are the opinions of Dr. Alex Lloyd, Dr. David Peck, or myself, or you, if you choose to share. You should always check with a licensed healthcare provider about any specific health concerns you may have. So um, I'm just going to... Okay. I get to take it away? <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to go ahead and take it away because Alex... Alex is looking for the link, so. Um, okay, okay, okay. He'll be here in a minute. He'll be in here. Okay. okay, so welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us now and in the future and whatever. Uh, I'm David Peck, and uh, Alex Lloyd will be joining us in a second. So this is about, in my words, freeing people from emotional slavery, being controlled by their emotions. In his words, helping a million people over the next year. I think we both agree. We want to do both. Uh, so we're spreading information uh, that will empower people to self-heal and um, understand not only themselves, why we do what we do, but why others do what they do. So uh, while we're waiting for Alex to get on the, uh, the uh, Zoom call here, I just want to, I'll, the, the topic today uh, we're addressing different areas and different um, issues, systemic issues. Those are issues that are that we see that are widespread, that are common across all people, and that have a systemic total effect on your body. Emotional and an emotional issue will affect all systemically uh, parts of your body, every cell action in a way. So the topic today is I, I call it making a mountain out of a molehill. Um, and uh, in other words, it's uh, issue inflation or exaggeration. And so, um, and I'm really interested to hear what Alex has to say about this, but uh, my own example is that, um, so this is when, you know, there's a small issue and suddenly it's a huge giant deal. And um, my own issue goes back to with my kids, you know, basically if I'm stressed with something, um, usually a grant deadline, you know, get, you know, upset, anxious, et cetera. Um, you know, essentially I'm taking it out on the people around me, you know, like, you know, my kids. So, so my example is my story is that, you know, I used to tell them to take their dishes back uh, after dinner, you know, the young kids and everything. And so, you know, one day they don't take the dishes back. And I'm like, oh, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. You know, I can do it today, but remember for tomorrow. And then another day, suddenly I have a grant deadline. They don't, they're not even aware of it. It's, I say, oh my God, you didn't take the dishes. You know, you kids are always doing, you know, I can't, how's you, how are you ever going to learn, you know, blah, blah. And it's like a mountain out of a molehill. And, um, and so, you know, it's really tough on them. I mean, they, they don't know whether, you know, what kind of mood he's in. And, and the reason I'm telling you this is because I believe I used to be something called alexithymic. And um, it, it's spelled A-L-E-X-I-T-H-Y-M-I-C. And Alex has nothing to do with Alex, obviously, but um, I'm sure he could shed more light on it. But essentially, it's someone who's not really in touch with their feelings. So, you know, I have a definition, difficulty identifying feelings, difficulty describing feelings, and externally oriented thinking. So always thinking about, you know, the other person instead of like, how am I feeling right now? So this is me, you know, basically. And so, um, you know, getting in touch with, I'm, you know, I'm much better now, basically, you know, if I'm, if I'm in a bad mood, I'll say to my kids, you know, I'm really grumpy and then suddenly they're on high alert and they're being all nice to me and everything <laughs> but at least it gives them some warning that you know dad's grumpy kind of thing now um but but this is this alexithymia is important because it's it's implicated with disease 
you know, one of which being, oh, Alex, okay, I just started rambling, you know. Um, I don't know oh, if you heard no, any of it. Good. Yeah, it's good. Uh, okay, okay. I'm talking about alexithymia, and that's me, basically, yeah. what I used to be, not in touch with my emotion. So that's the person who's like, oh, I'm not angry, or, you know, oh, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, you know, and it's actually just the opposite, right? So, um, and I was saying, you know, it's associated with things like chronic pain. You know, I could see myself leading to a life of chronic pain. You know, I was in reasonable, reasonable health, but I would have, you know, I'd get stress in my neck and I was, you know, debilitating sometimes. And so this whole thing, you know, and I was, I was talking to my kids about it, you know, as I start to get more in touch with my feelings and be able to let them know when I'm angry or in a bad mood. I talked to him. I said, you know, this is really great. You know, I feel great. I'm now, you know, I can actually verbalize how I'm feeling now. I can actually feel what I'm feeling. And and my youngest kid, you know, Bubba, Bubba he says, Pop, we learn about that in kindergarten. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so, um, uh, Somehow, maybe I learned about it in kindergarten. That somehow it got beaten out of me in my teen years or something. Yeah, I don't so think anyway. I learned. That. I don't think I learned that in kindergarten. I don't. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you mean you 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 learned it later? Yeah, 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 way yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Um, um, yeah, it is uh, is someone here that's going to do the disclaimer? Uh, she did it. Oh, she already did. did. Okay, okay. All she right. Did it? I gave. I gave a summarize of what the movement. I, you know. Okay. Good. Like, good. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't find the link. Uh, sorry, everybody. I'm late. Um, I'm Alex Lloyd. This is Dr. David Peck, double board certified surgeon and professor from Columbia, in New York City. We are on a mission to help as many people as we can greatly increase their emotional well-being to the point that it changes their life. And that's what we want for you too. And we do not consider ourselves gurus or the leader. We want you to come join hands and go with us, not following us. I consider uh, Alex a guru. Go ahead. Well, um, today um, we're talking about something that's absolutely fascinating to me. Um, exaggeration or making more out of something than maybe it really deserves. And all of us have known people that exaggerated all the time. There's a lot of people that think I exaggerate all the time because when I talk, I sound like a used car salesman. Um, I've tried to change that and I, it, it, it's almost impossible for me to change. It's, it's, it's just a passion. Alex, that's, that's not true because what you're talking about is that important. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, it's a passion for me. I, I, I think that's what is seen sometimes as exaggeration, but exaggeration is, is a fascinating thing. Let me read you the definition. This is out of the APA um the uh american psychological association handbook okay so this is official the act of embellishing or overstating a quality or characteristic of a person thing or situation that's the basic definition now uh a uh descript uh, more, more descriptive it is often a defensive reaction in which the individual justifies questionable attitudes or behavior through overstatement. Now, what would that be? Okay, here's an example. Like dramatizing, exaggerating the oppressive act of maybe my parents as a way of justifying my behavior that was incorrect so it's it's typically a defensive reaction to try to protect myself from a punishment or something from having done something wrong or not done something right or being given an assignment that i don't want to be given so i exaggerate how much i've got to do 
or something like that. But the, the part of this for me that's fascinating is, is not that, it's this. I've had, I, I've had, I don't know how many, probably at least 100 clients over the last um, 30 some odd years who exaggerated when they didn't need to exaggerate. Um, they weren't going to get in any trouble. It wasn't anything they'd done wrong. It wasn't anything they were dreading doing. But they still exaggerated. And and uh, I had one um, I had one mother tell me about her adult daughter, who was pro I don't know probably thirty years old. And here's the statement that she made: She lies when the truth would have worked better. Now think about that. They lie when the truth would have worked better. And the lie was an exaggeration of something going on in their life, in her life, the daughter, or exaggerating some behavior from the parents, exaggerating something from a boyfriend, exaggerating something from work, either, either building herself up to be doing better than she is. How many of us have ever done that? or known somebody who did it, that we're not doing very well, either financially or emotionally or something, and we have someone we know on the phone or come to our house or we meet them somewhere, and all of a sudden, even though we're not doing good, oh, I'm great, yeah, I'm wonderful, how are you doing, you know? Well, that that's an exaggeration, and, and, and you might even be able to say it's a lie, and, and so, what I'm really focusing in on today is what do we do or not do, say or not say, that comes out of internal pain to protect ourselves from a past thing that's happened, from something we're worried about in the future, when in reality, it would be better for us to not protect, to um, just shoot straight uh, and, and, and tell the truth, even if it's, well, yeah, I'm not doing real great, but, you know, I, I don't want to put that on you. I don't need to go into that, but, you know, since you ask, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm not doing very good, but I'm okay. Let's, let's, let's talk about what we're here to talk about. All right. And one of two things will happen. Either they'll say they don't want to talk about it either. So, okay, that's fine. Good. Well, well I'll be thinking about you or I'll be praying for you or, or something. Or they'll say, oh, my goodness. No, let's not talk about what we were going to talk about. Let, let, let's, uh, what do you, what, what's not good? Can I help? Is there something I can do? Okay. Now, now you have an opportunity to heal it. OK, when when that occurs and it occurs a lot of the time. So a lot of this to me, Dave, is me trying to deal with stuff myself and not let anyone else in that I would be so much better off if I would just shoot straight and let people know, let them help me, let them whatever, or at least I'm not living in duplicity where I'm lying, which spikes my stress, because internally I'm in pain, which means I've already got stress. So I just made it worse with the exaggeration or thing that wasn't true. And what I've, what I've seen, Dave, with my clients is they'll start out from the APA definition to justify a questionable thing um, for themselves. But then, if they keep doing those kind of behaviors and keep having to exaggerate to cover them up, they get to a point where that lady's daughter did, where they lie when the truth would have worked better. So I would, that's, that's kind of my issue with this, where I'm coming from. What's your two cents, Dave? Uh, well, yeah. And, you know, and I would just say to add to that though, or to qualify that is like, yeah, I mean, that's sort of, your spouse or a good friend, you know, those are the people you, okay, so this is what you're talking about, you know, just all the time, not never being able to. So uh, open up. 
And so the other thing, you know, that came to mind though, with my own case, I gave a story about where I used to like essentially bully my kids and like yelling at them and everything for not taking some dishes back, you know, after dinner, if I was in a bad mood or I, you know, stressed by a grant application or something like that. And so, you know, it made me think that, okay, so what was driving my behavior? Well, I believe listening to you that it was a defense to defend my vulnerability, my emotional right. vulnerability of being like, you know, oh, I'm worried I might not get this, you know, be good enough or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, thank you for that. Cause that clarified that, you know, cause there was always at the heart of it, there has to be something. Yeah, know? that's right. That's right. There's yeah. always a reason. We just yeah. don't always know what it is. Yeah. And I don't know, Bubba used to just one last, he used to do this great imitation of me for when I was in one of those moods. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so if you're, if you're here and, and with us live or watching uh, the podcast uh, sometime later, what's that issue for you where you will either tend to exaggerate in order to protect something or to make someone else think something advantageous about you or your behavior. Um, what is that for you? And, and, and that's what I would work on, right? Zero to 10, use the uh, custom that we're about to do until not only does the zero to 10 go down, but when in those situations, you find yourself not having to exaggerate, where maybe it's become just like rote habit. You've done it so much. Now it's not. Now it's like, oh, it's weird. I'm not just doing it without thinking about it anymore. Now it's like I've got a choice. All right, well then start to choose the truth in love, just the simple truth, okay? Uh, Maybe say it passionately like I do, or calmly like Hope, my wife would, or David, but say it, say the truth. And, and you will be blessed for that. Your stress will go down. And because this exaggeration lie thing can really take control of your life and become a habit or even an addiction uh, that sort of keeps you living two lives. One that you show to other people and one that they don't see that is really how you feel. So uh, that's it for me, Dave. You want to? That's great. Uh, intervention? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, go sure. ahead. That's great. Okay. So uh, this is going to be for. I think we talked about this. I'm going to call it systemic issue inflation. Okay. Okay. Right. Inflation. Oh yeah, exaggerate. that's right. That's right. It's, that's yeah, a well, great name. Issue inflation. That's a. I've never heard that. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Okay. Okay. We'll put that. Okay. So we pray. We request that all destructive negative cellular memories, unhealthy habits, addictions, patterns of living, false limiting beliefs, and any relationship issues related to systemic issue inflation or exaggeration be found opened and healed through love, light, truth, and God. Okay, and the first position is both hands in the temples for systemic inflation. Second position, left hand temple, right hand bridge. Third position is both hand jaws. All position. Mm-hmm. 
Next is a healing code two position, left hand brainstem, right hand high bridge. This is with touching, healing code two position. And switch it. Left hand high bridge, right hand brainstem. Yeah. systemic inflation. Okay, and the last position is left hand Adam's apple, right hand temple. Back to healing, healing code one position. Okay, now for a second cycle, back to position one, both hands, temples. Second position, left hand temple, right hand bridge. Third position, both hands, jaws. Both hands in the jaws now. Okay, healing code two position now again. Left hand brainstem, right hand high bridge. Left hand brainstem, right hand high bridge. And switch hands. Left hand high bridge, right hand brainstem. Okay, last position, left hand, Adam's apple, right hand, temple. Left hand, Adam's apple, right hand, temple. Healing code one position. The systemic inflation. And back to position one, both hands temples, that completes two cycles. Okay. All right, let's move right into uh, Trilogy. Uh, acupuncture points, custom acupuncture points. Let's start with eyebrows. Collarbones, 
little finger, temples, chin, thumb, middle of the chest, under the eyes, side of the hand, sore spot. middle finger, under the arms, under the nose, 9G, eyes open, closed, open, down to the left, down to the right, circle, circle back, <laughs> One, two, three, four, One, two, five. Three, four, five. <laughs> All right, and then let's do both hands brain stem. Section two, both hands brainstem for systemic inflation. Just relax. All right, activating governing and conception vessel. Let's do that twice, please. Two times. All right, and now custom healing centers. And let's start with throat. Please open and harmonize. Forehead, please open and harmonize. Base or root. Middle of the stomach. Crown. Under the belly button. heart, and then both hands over your heart, relax, let it process. And while you're letting it process, just another thing or two is, um, you know, if you are not an inflator or exaggerator or white liar or what, whatever the degree of it, you probably know someone that is. And, and just like I was sharing before, like the, the lady I had who was my client and her daughter, feel free to share this uh, custom uh, process we just shared with that person that you know does have an issue with that. And I think there's a wonderful way to do that in light of the definition of what it really is. You know, if you t say someone, hey, I think you should do this, you exaggerate all the time. Well, what does that do? It makes them defensive and they resist it. And that, no, I don't. What are you talking about? All right. But what if you tell them, hey, even according to the professional handbook, um, you're doing this as a self-protection defense that comes from internal pain. That's nothing to be ashamed of. Okay. So, this should help with that internal pain that's causing you to feel like you need to do that, okay? So I was just saying, uh, the reason I want to bring that up is, you know, don't go telling somebody, hey, you exaggerate. I think you need, you know, I, I mean, I really wouldn't do that. I, 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 would, I would go the other route, Dave. Alex, so I, I was really excited to talk about this this week, and you just reminded me about this. But, you know, I, I don't know how this is going to sound, but I honestly, I had an experience with a friend this week. And the story is that, you know, he basically, I was trying to get him to read the book for years, actually. He was a colleague with me, you know, back at the university. And he, I could never get him to read it. Like, I mean, he, I gave him the book and he said, oh, I do it. I never could do it. 
So now this is years later. Yeah, maybe about two, three years later now. So I'm talking to him, we're talking on the phone, and he basically, he needs something from me, you know, because I, I have access, you know, certain access yeah. needs. And so I thought about this and I said to myself, okay, uh, you know, I, I'll give you that. I'll, I'll help you with that, you know. Um, as long as you promise me you're going to try the healing code. <laughs> and it worked. And oh, I said to cool. myself, I said to myself, this is, this, is an, this is the key. This is the answer. Coercion. No, I'm serious, Alex. And this yeah. is why. This is yeah. why I say this. It's because, you know, the emotions that we have to address with this healing code, the trillion excited, you know, those are cha mo mostly childhood emotions, you know. So in yeah. other words, you know, I'm like a child when it comes to that particular issue or addressing that issue. And yeah. I'm saying to myself, what works with children? Coercion. I mean, if it's like a health and safety thing. Or, or, or coercion or an ethical bribe. If, okay. if, if I if I start doing this instead of that, I can give myself this reward. Yeah, that that'll work. So anyway, <laughs> no, that's a that's a great point. Great point. And I'm going to have to go. Um, but please stay on. The uh, lovely Johanna Chan is here to give you a custom that's even more powerful than the ones that we do. That's for everybody. And, um, and and please think about this issue this week. Uh, do you have an issue to someone you know and love? Uh, let's start healing that pain that's causing the defensiveness and protection that causes this exaggeration and inflation. Uh, so, Dave, say whatever you want. I've just got to run. No, no, I'm hey, running too. I'm running. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, Johanna. I got, I got to run. Okay. I'll, okay, I'll David. God bless. Okay. Bye. -bye.